Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Today's video is brought to you in association with Guitar World and the lovely people over at NewX who have sent me their latest 5.8 GHz wireless system. That's correct, Guitar has now gone 5G. We're going to talk about the technology of wireless transmission and why you shouldn't have to fear it. Many objections guitarists still have to this day are decades obsolete at this point, so let's all stop living in the past and find out what 5G can offer us. The C5RC 5.8 GHz wireless system comes in this lovely robust carry case which I love to see. It's important to keep these things safe and together while on the road but this isn't just a storage solution. The case contains an internal battery which will keep the transmitter and receiver topped up and power ready for whenever you need them. The transmitter and receiver have a sleek design and a very simple operation. Just a single button to turn these on, engage the mute and access cable tone which we'll talk more about later. When both of these turn on, they will auto-pair within seconds, ensuring that no time is wasted in setup. They boast a four-hour battery life, which is a long time, especially since you're going to be charging them between uses inside the case. It's a micro USB used to charge these, which is a little strange considering USB-C has been the standard on pretty much everything else for a while now, but what's carrying one more USB cable around really? This is a 5G transmission device. Now, I appreciate that it's very easy to make everything into a conspiracy when you don't understand how anything works. So we're going to talk about wireless transmission, how it works, and what 5G really means in this context. When you play your guitar, these strings interact with the magnetic pickups to generate an analog electric signal. Now, since sending analog information through the air is kind of meh, this signal is converted into a robust, high-quality digital representation within the transmitter. This digital version is compressed down into a tidy little data package, attached to a carrier frequency and transmitted through the air, received by the receiver where it is expanded out and converted back into an analog signal before passing to your effects, your amplifier or whatever else you've got the receiver connected to. Now you might be asking yourself, does this digitization process ruin my guitar tone? And the answer is simply no. No more than recording with your audio interface, or processing the sound in your DAW, or going through your fancy Strymon delay pedal. What governs the quality of the signal being retained through this process is the bit depth and sample rate. So long as we can sample the analog signal with high enough resolution at a fast enough speed, we will have so many data points that the resolution of the digital version will be indistinguishable from the original, at least to our ears and brain. 24 bits at 44.1 kHz is more than enough to represent audio to our ears without issue. The bit depth defines the amplitude resolution per sample. For reference, audio compact discs use 16-bit, so this guitar wireless kit is representing your guitar signal at better quality than I'd have been listening to Californication on my CD Walkman back in the 2000s, and I never had any problems with guitar tones on this album sounding digital. The sample rate is pretty easy to explain. You need a sample rate of at least double the highest frequency you wish to represent. If it's less than double, then you run the risk of audio aliasing, where high frequency content can be misrepresented as lower frequencies due to lack of data. The sample rate here is 44.1 kHz, which is the standard sampling rate for anything audio. The upper limit of human hearing is 20 kHz if you're young and haven't yet ruined your ears with the loudest rock and roll. For the rest of us, that limit is, sadly, significantly lower. So with a sampling rate of over 40 kHz, this new X wireless kit is able to represent every frequency your guitar can possibly produce, and then some, without any confusion whatsoever. <laughs> The carrier frequency is exactly what it sounds like. The digital data package of your signal is carried on an ultra-high frequency transmission wave between the transmitter and the receiver. The carrier frequency will have some impact over the range, spread and how much data can be transmitted per second, but what we really care about when we're sending our guitar signal wirelessly through the air is will that transmission interfere with other transmissions of the same frequency. 
As wireless technology forever expands, there's an ongoing arms race to transmit in unoccupied frequencies. It wasn't so long ago that 2.4 GHz was the ideal range as it was so far above other radio broadcasting frequencies that you'd never encounter that spinal tap military radio through the amplifier situation when using a wireless kit. However, in the last five years, there's been a massive explosion in the popularity of Bluetooth headphones and earbuds. Probably something to do with the complete removal of headphone jacks from all mobile devices. And as such, the 2.4 GHz range has become rather crowded with all this new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth activity. In fact, most of the wireless microphone arrangements that we YouTubers are using are running in the 2.4 GHz range, which did cause a lot of problems when we used to all get together at large trade show events back in the before times. I remember at the NAMM show 2020, there were many of us who lost day one audio due to transmission dropouts and crosstalk, due to hundreds of people all trying to use the same wireless mic technology in the same room. So to ensure your guitar doesn't get lost in that transmission noise, NewX have jumped up to 5G. This is transmitting in the 5.8 GHz range, which is a relatively clutter-free range, for the moment at least, and offers a wider range of frequencies than the 2.4 GHz system, meaning that the transmitter can jump around easily to find a less occupied band should it encounter any foreign transmissions crowding its airspace. Of course, the environments in which guitar wireless systems are often used makes it very, very unlikely you're ever going to come across any of those NAMM show style issues. Even if a few of your band members are using wireless kits on stage, the 5.8 GHz system has more than 20 channels it can jump between. So unless the whole five band bill all use wireless kits and jump on stage to play at the same time, you're very unlikely to ever come across the issue. Ah, but what about latency, I hear you ask? There's always going to be a slight audio delay between both halves of the wireless system as the transmitter needs to pack down all that information and the receiver unpack it again on the other side. And that is correct. It's an unavoidable truth of the physics of the situation, but much like the bit and sample rates, so long as that latency is short enough, it won't even be perceptible to our ears. If you are using a cable, then the transmission is going to be instantaneous. Well, we're slightly limited by the speed of light, the fastest anything can move in the universe, but to our human perceptions, that's instant. The new X has a less than five millisecond latency, which when compared to the instantaneous speed of light does seem rather slow, but five milliseconds is still too short a time for us to even perceive. For reference, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. So if you're standing three meters, or around 10 feet away from your amp, then it takes longer than five milliseconds for the sound leaving your amp to even reach you. It's largely understood that around 30 milliseconds audio latency is when people really start to notice that something is amiss. If you're designing hearing aids, then it's recommended that you have no more than 10 millisecond latency, otherwise that could confuse the user. This new X wireless kit has half that maximum recommended latency. If you still aren't convinced, then it often takes more than five milliseconds for vibrations reaching your eardrum to be processed by your audio cortex and understood by your brain as sound. The simple fact is your brain just isn't working fast enough to even notice a five millisecond latency. Now, if you use long cables, you will probably be aware that the capacitance of the cable, coupled with the high impedance of the pickup, creates a low pass filter, bleeding treble out of your signal. The longer the cable, the more prominent the effect. This is what input buffers and effects pedals are largely there to prevent. And that's the same as a wireless transmission. Part of this process is to drop the signal impedance. This means that the signal reaching your amper effects doesn't include that slight treble roll off that a cable usually provides. Now that can either be a benefit or a detriment depending on your opinion. Angus Young famously considered his wireless kit to be part of his tone because it gave a little more treble and therefore a touch more drive to his signal. However, if you like the sound of your cabled rig and feel that the wireless kit is just a little too bright, that's no problem at all with the new X. This contains cable tone. When pressing the button on the receiver, the light turns orange and now we're rolling off everything above the two kilohertz region just slightly to replicate the sound of your cable rig.
Finally, let's talk range. The new X wireless system quotes a nominal 30 meters or 100 foot line of sight. And let's be honest with ourselves, who's ever going to be more than 30 meters away from their amp while playing guitar? This is of course an idealized maximum. Line of sight implies that there will be no obstacles or atmospheric limitations to the transmission. Of course, in reality, in the situations we're gonna be using a wireless kit, of course, there's always going to be some kind of obstacle between the transmitter and the receiver. And especially it shows full of warm, moist bodies. A lot of that transmission is going to be absorbed by your flesh sack audience. So it's realistic to expect your range to be less than the quoted nominal maximum. But I think most people using wireless kits really just want to play in their bedroom or in their kitchen or while on the john or basically anywhere around their house. And as long as there isn't too many solid brick walls between you and your amplifier, or unless you live in some sort of Agatha Christie style murder mansion, then you will find the range of these more than sufficient. There we are, that explains the new X 5G wireless system. For my testing here, this works as described. The sound quality is indistinguishable from using a cable. I don't get any dropouts when I'm playing on the throne and I just love what they've done with this rechargeable case. So if you're looking for a bit more freedom to move around and untether yourself from the tyranny of cables, then why not give this a look? Links to this product will be in the description of this video. Thanks to Guitar World and New X for making this one possible, and don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe.